my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Dad! Breakfast is ready? I'm in the shower. I'll be right out. Good morning, Miss Margaret. Got a package here for you. It's from Cables. Could this be my new bathing suit? Kind of heavy for a bathing suit, ain't it? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh, they've made a mistake. You won't swim very fast, but you sure will be nice and warm. <laughs> Couldn't be a mink, Miss Margie. Minks own a little bit of animals like this. <laughs> they sew hundreds of them together. They do? Gee, I bet that hurts. You want me to send it back to the store, Miss Margie? did, and what a mistake. Yes, I have it right here. Send your man over for it. The purchaser wants to come and pick it up himself? Who's the purchaser? Sir who? Oh, Sir Saeed Nassif. Yes, uh, give him my address. It's perfectly all right. Charlie, he's coming here. Who? Sir Saeed Nassif. I understand that part of it, but who'd you say was coming here? Oh, that's his name, Sir Saeed Nasir. He's a U.N. delegate from Barabia. I've seen his picture in the paper. My picture was in the paper once. I was in an automobile accident. He's young and wonderfully fierce looking. I was terrible looking. Cuts and bruises. Charlie, when you bring him up, sort of looks swank and formal, will you? Swank and formal? That's wonderful. That's hard work. Will you? And wear your brown tie. We're having cinnamon toast for breakfast. Brown goes well with cinnamon toast. Good morning, dear. Margie, what's the matter? You haven't apologized yet. Apologize? Oh, last night. Yes, apologize. I will not. I was doing it only for your own good. Well, it was only one minute after 12. Well, we agreed he'd never stay later than 12. He was only one minute overdue. And one minute isn't very much. And any father who'll kick a girl's boyfriend out for being one minute overdue isn't very fair. And I'll never speak to you again until you apologize. Brady's just a knucklehead who will never amount to anything, and I don't like you wasting so much time with him. Can't you understand? Can't you see, honey, I know what's best for you. You may be 21, but you're still just a little girl. Little girl. Little girl, little girl. That's all I ever hear. I'm not a little girl. Oh, no, you're a woman of the world. I'm over 21. I know what I'm doing, and pass the milk. Say please. Please what? Please pass the milk. You've already got the milk. Thanks. You're welcome. And you can keep the milk. I'm such a little girl, I don't have sense enough to use milk. I eat my cornflakes dry. Oh, Margie, for heaven's sake, wet those things. No, I want to suffer. That'll make you happy. Mrs. 
not polite to drink out of the pitcher. I'm always impolite when I'm choking to death. But it's your own fault for acting so childish. Childish. More of that little girl. I'm not a little girl. Oh, honey, if you'd only try and see my side of it. I do try, but you never seem to try to see my side of it. I'd give up my life for you. I mean that literally. I know you would, and I'd do the same for you. When I seem to interfere with your life, it's just because I think I know what's best for you. I think I understand. Now, well, that's more like my little girl. I'm not a little girl. Here we go again. You're not a little girl. You're a big girl. You're a great big girl. You're 12 feet tall. I won't argue with you anymore. If I'm such a little girl, how come some man gave me a genuine mink coat? Now, really, honey. Excuse me. I'll be right back. Where did it come from? Am I still a little girl? Where did it come from? I'm not such a little girl after all, am I? Margie, you wouldn't accept a gift like that from a man. Oh, it came from a man, all right. Who is it? I demand to know. I don't have to tell you. I'm a big girl now. Now, listen, if you don't tell me who... Oh, Mr. Honeywell. Pardon? Mr. Honeywell gave it to you. Mr. Honeywell? Yes, just like the time he gave you that expensive compact to talk me into giving up my vacation so he could take his vacation. My, what a vivid imagination. Well, it has to be Honeywell. It couldn't be Freddy. Freddy couldn't afford a mink, a mink shoelace. <laughs> That's a funny chuckle chuckle. What's Honeywell got up his sleeve? What does he want you to talk me into this time? Well, for one thing, he wants you to get to the office on time. All right, when you come to work late, it makes me furious, makes me furious. You better hurry, Dad. Okay, I'm going. <laughs> Yes. Miss Sherman, did you tell Mr. Honeywell I wanted to see him? Yes, but I'll ring him again. No, don't buzz him again. I'll go to his office. Oh, there you are. Something wrong? I'm on to you. It's a pretty underhanded way of doing business, if you ask me. Sit down. Say, all right, does it occur to you that I'm the president of this corporation and that you're only the first vice president? Nobody balls me out around here. I'm sorry, Mr. Honeywell. Uh, that's better, Albright. Good understanding between us, good relationship. I love you like a son, and it'd break my heart to have to fire you. Now, what's this all about? I just wanted to know why you gave my daughter that mink coat. I don't know what you're talking about, but it's making me furious. You didn't give Margie a mink coat? Certainly not. You're barking up the wrong executive. Well, then who could have given it to her? And from my summer palace to the capital, it is 300 miles, mostly over desert. Everything you say sounds so exciting and romantic. I'm happy to know you do not find me a bore. But now we come to the question your good manners forbid you to ask. But for the sake of your feminine curiosity, I shall answer the question without your asking. What question? I don't know... <laughs> you mean you have not been wanting to know for whom I purchased the coat? <laughs> I thought so. In your mind, you think, is it for an opera star, an English noblewoman, an international spy? But alas, it is, as you Americans say, the payoff. The coat is for my sister. <laughs> your sister? Yes. By the way, do you like it? The coat. Oh, it's gorgeous. Well, if you like it that much, keep it. Well, golf and gas. Uh, That's the way they talk in the American comic strips. Confusing, but amusing. <laughs> Seriously, I'd be honored if you'd keep the coat. But Saeed, I, I couldn't. It is pronounced Saeed. And do drop the sir. 
Saeed, then. But let me explain. In this country, girls just don't accept mink coats from strange men. But wait. If your sister wouldn't mind, I would like to borrow it for a few days. I'll be very careful with it. As long as you wish. Now, come. I'm taking you to lunch. Lunch? I'd love to lunch with you. Say, there is one question I'd like to ask you, Saeed. Why did you insist on calling for the coat yourself? Oh, that. I'll show you. When they delivered the coat to you, they delivered this to me. And I simply had to meet the girl who was going to wear this. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Mr. Albright, I don't know anything about a mink. Then where did she get it? Look, Mr. Albright, this is Freddie Wilson you're talking to. I'm crazy about Margie. I want to know where she got it just as much as you do. Now listen, I'll keep you here all day, all night if necessary. Now you come clean. You gave her that mink coat. I don't know anything about it. I tell you, I don't know anything. All right, I believe you. But somebody gave it to her, and we're going to find out who. On your feet. Yes, sir. Now, you get on her trail, and don't you come back until you've got something to report. But suppose I never get anything to report. In that case, we'll speak very kindly of you on rainy nights as we sit listening to the crackling of the open fire. Now, get on her trail. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sir Saeed? This is Mr. Wilson. Freddy, meet Sir Saeed Nazif. How do you do? Yeah. All right. This is Sir Saeed Nazif, UN delegate from Barabia. Sir Saeed, Vern Albright, the gentleman you asked to see. How do you do? How do you do? Yeah. And won't you sit down, please? You, uh, you asked to see me? Yes, Mr. Albright. A certain person who desires to remain anonymous has told me in some 18 million words that you are beyond doubt the world's greatest and most brilliant investment counselor. I'll come right to the point. My country has decided to invest certain surplus funds in American securities. And this admirer of yours would skin me alive were I to permit anyone but you to handle said investments. You accept? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. And the blessing of all the citizens of Barabia. Good day. Good day. Good day, sir. Whole country, Barabia. A million dollar account. A multi million dollar account. <laughs> Mr. Albright, I've got the answer. What did you find out? It's that guy, Sir Syed Nasif. Sir Syed Nasif? My new client? Well, what's he got to do with Margie? Well, that's just it. I saw him with her today. Who else could give her anything like a mink coat? Oh, I see it all now. Who else would have given me such a big build-up? The greatest counselor in the world. No one but my little Margie. Oh, I've been unkind to her, and all the time she's been hiding the fact that she knows this Sahid Nasif so that I'd get all the credit for this big deal. Oh, she's wonderful. Oh, she sure is. Is she in, Mr. Albright? Yes. Well, I, uh, I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> oh, here. Go get yourself some. Freddy, thanks a lot. appeal to you, Saeed. Forget this American girl. My dear colleague, she is so very beautiful. Alive, yes, but death is never beautiful. Oh, come now, Caliph. We're civilized people. This is America. Those ancient prejudices are half the world away from us. In any land, I am still a Wadi. We are old, old friends, Saeed. I will not speak of this again, but consider most carefully what I have said. You can't do it, all right. I'm the president of this company, and you can't reject an account like that just because the man gave your daughter a mink coat. Margie means more to me than any account. Yeah, you got me over a barrel. You're the one he wants to deal with. The trouble with you is you've never had a daughter. Well, that makes good sense, too, because I never had a wife. But you're not going to reject that account. I certainly am. You are not. I am. You are not. I am, and that's final. Hey, yeah, you shouted at me. I apologize, but I'm not going to deal with that guy. Now, look, Albright, restrain yourself. Just a minute. Yes? Sir Saeed is here. Yes, we're expecting him. Send him in. It's Saeed. Yeah. Albright, don't be rash about this. Ah, Sir Saeed. Mr. Honeywell. <laughs> Would you like a chair? Uh, no, thank you. My secretary tells me you sent back the papers and executed with a note rejecting our account. I don't understand. Oh, don't you? Saeed, I'm going to try and restrain myself. What the devil do you mean by giving my daughter a fur coat? Oh, you found out about that. Margie asked me not to say anything. Yeah. All right. Oh, your anger does you honor, Mr. Albright. 
We're not here to discuss my conduct. The point at issue is yours. Well, there's a very simple explanation. Well, of course there is. He forgot it. He just happened to leave that mink coat in your apartment. Didn't you, Sir Saeed? Why, if I had a dollar for every time I've forgotten my but own... I didn't forget it. I gave it to her. And the explanation, Mr. Albright, is that I want to marry your daughter. You want to marry Margie? What does she have to say about that? Well, she hasn't made up her mind yet, but I think I'm fairly persuasive. Holy mackerel! I know this comes as a shock to you, but you won't be losing her entirely. If Margie accepts me, we would live in this country nine months of the year. Why, that's wonderful. In the other three months, you can cable your investment orders. Mr. Honeywell, if you don't mind, I think this is something that Sir Saeed and I should discuss alone. Well, I guess that's right. I'll be in the boardroom. Uh, if you want me, just tell Miss Sherman on the phone and she'll get me right away. Well, Mr. Albright, I suppose I had best start by saying I've fallen in love with your daughter. Oh, that's very understandable. You've seen enough of my own financial standing to realize that I can provide for her. Oh, yes, yes, that part is perfect. As I have said, I love your daughter. Yes. I love her very deeply. I am only worried about Margie's happiness. I will always cherish her. Oh, that's great. I will cherish and love her the first, no matter how many wives I have. You mean to say Margie has to enter a harem? Not when we are living over here. But during the short time we will spend in my country, I would expect her not to offend against the customs. Listen, Saeed, if I have anything to do with it, you'll never marry my daughter. Mr. Albright, I wonder if you realize the risk I run in making your daughter my first wife. It has been traditional for the Nasi family to make their first alliance with a Wadi. The Wadi are a very powerful and violent family. I run a grave risk. Saeed, before I let you marry my daughter, I'll see you in, in, in Baravia. In my country, that would have been final. But we are in your country now, and I think the decision will be up to Margie. Get out! Mr. Albright, let's be civilized about this. Get out, or in a very civilized manner, I'll throw you out. Yes, sir? Miss Sherman, get Mr. Wilson on the phone and tell him I'm coming over to see him right away. Somehow, Freddy, somehow, we've got to make you look more attractive to Margie than this guy, Saeed. Yes, sir. But we haven't got much to work with. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I've got an idea. The Wadi. The what? Not the what, the Wadi. What's a Wadi? A very powerful and violent family. I'd be violent too if anybody gave me a name like that. Now get this straight. Tonight, I'm going to be a Barabian assassin. Take notes. Yes, sir. Shoot. Somehow, I'll have to manage to keep Margie home alone tonight. And somehow, one word or two. Oh, forget it. Now pay attention. I'll sneak into the apartment at 8 o'clock sharp tonight, dressed as a Barabian assassin. You give me a few minutes to really throw a good scare into her, and then you rush in and save her. How am I going to save her? By doing something you've wanted to do for years. What's that? Take a sock at me. You mean I really get to sock you? Oh, but not too hard. Now, take it easy or I'll sock you back. But make it look real. Margie won't think Sir Saeed's half so glamorous if she thinks she has to face a murder every time she turns around. Hey, wait a second. What about Charlie? He sees everything that goes on from that elevator of his. Oh, he'll go along with anything for me. We'll take him in on it. Okay. Now remember, 8 o'clock sharp. Check your watch. <sighs> Here, I've got an idea. Hold this. Now stay right there. should wait. So you are 
are the infidel who thought to take the rightful place of a daughter of the Wadi. Honest, mister, I don't want to take anybody's place. You shall die. Hold fast, you villainous thug. <laughs> Not so much pressure. I hope you know I can handle him. Be calm. I can handle him. You better get some rope. We'll tie him up. <laughs> Mr. Albright, you gotta get out of here. I saw you running down the back way a little while ago, and you look much stockier. Charlie, you've been working too hard. <laughs> what do you mean you saw Mr. Albright go out the back door a while ago? You feel all right, honey? Uh -huh. Oh, you were so brave. Yeah, I was, wasn't I? The way you kept telling me to keep calm that you could handle it. Me and my big mouth. Why, Freddy? Margie, run for your life! <laughs> Freddy, stop! <laughs> Gulp, gasp, and choke. Feel better, Dad? A little. Well, at least, Margie, I hope this will give you an idea of what married life with a man like Saeed would be like. Married life? I'd never have married Saeed. And I sent his sister's coat back today. His sister's coat? Then you weren't going to marry him? Certainly not. You thought I was going to marry him? Well, I thought you might. <laughs> you mean I went through all this just for... Say, what's the idea of socking me? For Mr. Albright, you made the plan, and I was only going to... Get out of here and don't come around with any more of your wild ideas. <laughs> Margie, this place confuses me. Ready? It confuses me. Confuses me. 